What's up everybody, this is Tower 7 Torjos being news, and this is going to be an interesting computer video. Right here is my Dell Precision T3400. Now, I ordered a Intel Xeon X3370, and it was in this machine for a little bit of time, but uh, I removed it. Reason why is because my main Minecraft server uses the same exact chipset and will actually work with that Xeon. So I decided that the extra performance boost and speed would definitely be a help to my server. So... This means that I put the original Q6600 back in the system. Now, it's not original, but it's 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 a different... It's a long story. Anyhow, that CPU is overclockable. Now, you may be wondering, Dells are not overclockable. At least they are, but not easily. Uh, I have done it a couple of times. Um, I've done it once in a consumer, like one of these machines. Someone wanted a water cool, like this really OP modified... Dell Optiplex 745 I actually ended up water cooling the thing. That was the biggest disaster of my life. I never want to water cool one of these Dell PTX systems ever again. But nonetheless, I have overclocked them before. It is not an easy process, but it can be done. But before we overclock this system, I need to replace the heatsink. The heatsink in this thing is beyond pathetic. It is a tiny piece of shit. And I have the same exact heatsink rack mount. But in order to get that, I have to pull it out of one of my, my Dell Optiplex 745 downstairs. I also am really running low on thermal compounds, so I may not be able to uh, use that heatsink. I have to see if I have any remaining thermal compound. And if I do, hopefully I can try it. I could probably just put toothpaste on it until I order the thermal compound, which I if I don't if I can't find it or whatever. But I figured I might make this video on the way of upgrading this machine. Thing we're gonna have to do is we're just gonna have to go ahead and power down the machine uh, just go ahead and shut down the machine here just very basic as you might know I have a different color scheme and that's because I was originally um oh I changed that are you serious I guess that changes with the theme anyhow I was um I was basically trying to uh, get a easier theme on the system he's just trying OBS I got OBS running okay but the system was pretty darn laggy with it because I don't have that extra CPU horsepower, but with this upgrade, I will. So I'll be right back. Alright, so we're going to take her apart, and uh, I'm going to tell you the craziest thing about this machine. I am planning to overclock the CPU to 3.2 GHz. You heard me right, 3.2 GHz. Now, a lot of you computer enthusiasts that have used these machines in the past might be saying, What the fuck?! And I can explain why they might be doing that if you're not in the computer enthusiast community. These older Intel multi-core systems were never, ever really perfected with high clock speeds. So they were the highest clock speed you can get at stock speed from these systems were approximately 3 gigahertz. And this, this I have heard that these CPUs are capable of clocking up to 3.2 gigahertz. I have no idea of the effects that this machine will have because I'm not so sure that this machine will be able to do it stably. So it's going to be trial and error here. I'm going to try it. Start out slow. I'm going to try 3 gigahertz. Try to see if that works stably enough. I'm going to try to boost it up to 2. Uh, I have heard though with these machines that it does come become a tad bit unstable at 3 gigahertz. So that is posting a, a uh, concern. Although I have not overclocked this type of system, I know I've done it to 755s, and they have actually ran fine with that overclocking. They say they become unstable, but I've actually seen it run a little better than you might think. This is a totally different system. It uses a Dell BTX board, but it's a totally it's a similar chipset, but the way that power is delivered to the processor is entirely different. And there's that puny heatsink. Wow, what a piece of shit that thing is. That's pathetic. I've got a way better heatsink, but it's installed on my main server downstairs, so that's what we're going to get. Alright guys, I've gone ahead and I removed the heatsink. Now, I just need to show you how pathetic this thing is. Yeah, it is built fairly nicely, but just... That's pathetic. You have a, I have a, you have a top of the line business class machine that has that in it for a CPU heatsink? What the fuck, Dell? 
It's actually kind of dirty. I don't know what the hell this is, but it feels like tar from a... It kind of does smell like cigarettes. But this machine, as far as I know, was never used in a smoking household, so... I don't know what that is. And here's the Q6600 in here. It's got a little bit of thermal paste on it, so it might still be good. Check this out here. I might have to put toothpaste on it. I have nowhere to see... I haven't found any, um... I haven't found any thermal paste, so I think I'm going to have to use toothpaste. And for those saying, oh my god, you're going to kill it, it's going to overheat itself. Ah! No, it won't. Um, toothpaste is actually an exceptional heat conductor. Unfortunately, though, it dries up in 72 hours in the system here. So if you have a machine and you need to just use it as a temporary solution, it'll get you by just fine. Anyhow... I'm going to have to shut down this machine because this is the machine that has a really nice heat sink on it. The pathetic thing about this machine is it's only a, it's a Core 2 Dual 6300 and it's only got a clock speed of 1.83 gigahertz. What the fuck? Why does it need a heat sink that beefy if it's driving such a low-end, high nanometer uh, processor? It's really dumb. Anyhow, let's shut this machine down and let's get to work. By the way, that little machine you see down there, that's the machine that's rocking the Xeon. I know, pretty funny, huh? Okay, we gotta lift it on our side. Let's pop the case. I don't have the hard drives in this thing really secured well. So that's always fun. And look at this heatsink! Look at how freaking beefy that thing is! Like, what the hell? It's got... Look at the copper tubing going through it, too. It's like, wow! Like, honestly, what the fuck? That's really dumb. And just compare it to that. It's like, what was Dell thinking? This machine doesn't even... It's honestly really dumb, but... I, honestly, if I was the manager on the production line that saw them putting those heat sinks in those precision machines, I would have ripped someone a new one. Even if it wasn't my decision, it was someone on higher end. Like, even the higher end of the, uh, the corporation lines. I would literally threaten to quit the job because of that. Because that's how pathetic it is. But anyhow, let's go ahead, and I don't know where I put my screwdriver, so I gotta go grab it, and we're gonna go ahead and upgrade this. Just look at this, look at this bullshit, honestly. Cheap piece of shit. We got this really high quality one. Look at that, it's got, it's got oil, it's got copper pipes with oil in them, leading up the system. Like, what were they thinking with this? This machine, with this heatsink and that Core 2 processor in it, never ever gets past 50 Celsius. So why the fuck... Did they use such a beefy heatsink and such a low-end processor, cl and a lower clock system, and use such a shitty end processor heatsink for such a high-end machine? I don't know, but whoever designed this was clearly a fucking idiot, and they must have been stoned off their mind because this is dumb. This is the stuff you would see in this. It, excuse me. This is the stuff that you would expect to see in a Dell Precision machine. This should be in an Altiplex system. Matter of fact, the uh, the funnier thing is is that these are in the GX series Optiplex, the uh, GX620 series. And the funny thing is, is that, uh, the, the Pentium 4 should have these as heat sinks, not this. So, but whatever. I'm not the designer of this design. Obviously, I find it pretty fucking dumb. If you agree with me, just tell me, because this is really dumb. Anyhow, let's get the old heat sink and the precision mounted in the new machine. I was going to do a CPU upgrade... But, um, I have a, bo a box full of Core 2, uh, Core 2 Dual E8200, 2.66 gigahertz processors, but I'm not going to be installing one because I don't honestly think this machine use needs that kind of power, so I'm just going to leave the heatsink, the processor in there. So I'm going to go ahead and install this older one and we'll see what happens. Okay, so that's heatsinks in here now. I went ahead and I cleaned off both of them because there's no reason that if these machines are going to be using these heat sinks that they shouldn't be cleaned off. And I'm going to put this machine back together. I'm hoping I put this thing in right. I really don't want this machine to thermal throttle itself and act up. So let's go ahead and hook her back up. From those, the looks of it, this machine is firing up and it's working just fine. The hard drive in there is, uh, the SCSI, or the, uh, server drives are running up in the, uh, the Dell SAS controller, which controls the, uh, the, the three, um, the four, what's the name? There's only got, it only detects one for whatever reason, but there's the four, um, drives. It's only detecting two for whatever reason, but the BIOS only controls two. And it would appear that the machine is not thermaling itself, so 
That's good. She's running happy. So, we've got the good heatsink now. Let's install this bitch. I got the heatsink secured nicely, as you can tell. It's really in there. Clean again. That's a nice heatsink. That, that was kind of a bitch to mount, actually. It wasn't quite the right size, so I actually had to cut down the uh, ribbons, but I got it in. That's all that matters. So, we're going to plug her up, and we're going to find the PLL and see what we can do. All right, I got the machine hooked up here, and I've been playing around with it for a little bit, but from what I've noticed, I actually, with that new heatsink installed, the machine was running at idle of 38 degrees Celsius. The machine was running extremely cool and really nicely, actually. So, it's absolutely fantastic. So, th this will be nice. The overclocking will be a successful thing, most likely. Um, if it does work, we're not going to have to worry about thermal problems. That's out of the question. Um, the thing that I'm still concerned about is I have to find the PLL clock, and I have to find what clock it is, and then I have to little by little adjust the clock speed. This is very, very, very... From what I've heard, these machines can become kind of unstable at 3 gigahertz. I want to get this thing to 3.2 gigahertz. This could be a nightmare, actually. So, I have seen Core 2 quads become extremely unstable at that clock speed. So, this is more or less of an experiment, and I might just seize up my machine. So, if I do, I'm going to have to do a full-blown BIOS reset. But it won't come to that, most likely. I'll start off at 3 gigahertz, and we'll see how she performs. And if I know she acts a little bit franicky, I won't go any higher. I'm not pushing this machine further than it needs to go. 3 gigahertz is more than enough than what I'll be using. So, yeah, I'll continue when I get done with this. Alright, guys, with a little update here, I finally found out what PLL controller this system has. And, uh, I did set it incorrectly. I did find the proper controller, but I set the settings incorrectly, and I may or may have not have completely locked up the machine. So, I had to do a BIOS reset, which is always a bitch. But the machine is back up and running, so I'll give you an update when we can try to get this thing up and running. Uh, overclocked. Alright, guys. We're at 2.8 gigahertz. I'm going to crank this up and we're going to see her crashing point. Hopefully we can get her cranked up pretty hard. Oh, no. oh man, I'm getting really nervous. I don't want to walk this. 3 gigahertz. We're at 3 gigahertz. And the system is not stable. <laughs> well, they weren't shitting me. Uh, you go past three and it becomes unstable, so that was very clearly not a lie. As you can see, the system... Compl you know, it's funny, my second graphics card is still displaying video. Yeah, I was at... I think maybe I should stick at 2.9. I think if I were to go any higher, I could definitely risk some serious damage to the North Bridge. But you saw, I did overclock the system, so the system is overclockable. But I think part of the reason it, it cut out like so was because um was because I think maybe the um the main um what's the name I think maybe the the North Bridge got too hot I might have to re make like a new cooler for that thing I might actually have to install like a little uh, dinky winky heatsink for that thing like uh, with a little fan on it because I think it gets a little hotter than it should and that's not very good to the North Bridge. But the machine did overclock, and obviously I went past 3 and it became unstable. I went to 3.1 and it became completely unstable. As you just clearly saw, the machine just blue screened. But the machine was running at 2.8 gigahertz smoothly, and then once I hit 3.1, it pretty much just dropped all balls to the wall and it became completely unstable. But... This is a nice feature. This means that I pretty much know how to overclock the system now. Um, and now that I've gotten the modifications... Oh, shit. She can't start herself. Oh, man. She can't start herself without... Oh, fuck. I think I might have just fucked myself. Uh, all right. Time to clear CMOS. I'll be back. Well, it's not the BIOS that's fucked. It's the Windows OS. 
I literally fucked the OS. Um, this is why frontside bus overclocking is extremely dangerous. This is a very clear example why you should not do it unless you're a complete computer whiz. There is stuff... I, this is probably the third time I frontside bus overclocked, and it is not a stable way to overclock. It is a easy... It's not very easy. It's, it's a way of doing it, but not a very efficient way. If your motherboard has the option to overclock, please, for fucking God's sake, do it on your motherboard's BIOS settings. Because clocking up your, your front side bus to mat, to up to overclock your processor can lead to severe instability problems. And you can seriously cause some damage to your machine. This case, I pretty much fucked my whole Windows operating system. This is not a huge issue for me, honestly. I probably will find a way to fix this. I know probably knowing me, I'll pull something out of my ass and I'll fix it. Because the machine shows 2.40 gigahertz until you try to load up Windows and the thing full throttles into 3.1 and it just fucking crashes. So, this can be fixed. I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna do it, but I'll figure it out. Uh, there's gotta be a way out of this. I might be able to pop in the Windows disk and see if I can basically, um... I can try to see if I can boot into like safe mode. I could try doing safe mode. I haven't tried safe mode yet. Uh, if that doesn't work, then I'll pop in the Windows installation. Oh, I don't. I can't use the Windows installation disk. I'll have to use a flash drive. And what I'll have to do is I'll have to do startup repair and see if that will fix it. Like I said, guys, you should never ever try to use front side bus overclocking. The only time you want to use it is if you want to squeeze a little bit of power out of it. And like, even when I was going to 2.8, I was kind of pushing it. I must admit, I was really pushing it at 2.8. I just wanted to see how hard it can go. And 3.1 was the breaking point. It was usable until, like, two seconds, and then the whole machine fucking crashed. So, I'm going to go ahead and hard shut down the machine. And we're going to try to do advanced booting options. And my keyboard always likes to go back to the red theme. I hate that. Um... So we're gonna try this. You know, just, just like be. I'm being honest with you guys. Don't use front side bus overclocking. It's a pretty dumb way of overclocking. It does work, but it's not efficient. Okay. Well, I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get into safe mode here. It's probably gonna crash on safe mode because it might still be trying to boost the clock speed up. So if it does crash on safe mode, it's safe to say that I'm gonna have to pop in the Windows disk see if I can do a system restore to. Maybe, or I know I did a, a restore point earlier. That's the smart thing I did. I set a restore point before I did this. So, just a heads up, if you're going to be doing this, this is not a how-to video, but if you are going to be doing this, make sure... Oh, hey, we got safe mode working. Okay, that's a relief. But if you are going to be doing something like this, especially in front side bus overclocking, always set a restore point before you do it. Any massive computer generation work where it's going to involve some heavy stuff that could possibly really damage your machine, it is very crucial that you set that you basically set up a restore point. So I'm going to see if I can get the machine back to 2.8, and I think I'm going to keep it there. I'm not maybe 2.9ish. Uh, I'll experiment. Maybe I can get it to three, like barely three. I'll, I'll see what I can do. All right, I think I might have fixed it. I have no idea if I have. I'm going to take the bet that I might have fixed it. And if it crashes upon startup again, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to have to reinstall Windows. It's that or revert to the backup. But quite frankly, I might not even revert to that restore point. Reason why is because actually I this hard drive that's in the system is in really bad shape. It's a very slow drive, and quite frankly, I do not want to deal with that drive. So I might upgrade the drive for, to a 500 gig drive, and if I do, it's going to be replaced, and there's going to be a whole new version of Windows installed on there. I just don't want this. This version of Windows has got some corruption issues. I don't even know why. Just like I think that hard drive is pulling some BS tricks on me where it's corrupting and stuff. Keep our fingers crossed, guys. Oh. It's a fucking miracle. Oh, okay. Actually, I'm going to make another restore point and just to make sure that because I did do a couple of things. I did download some stuff or not download, but um, it's a long story. I just I just want to have that stuff on here. So I'm going to create another restore point. I'm going to go out this again. Thank God. 
So like I said, I know I've been saying this a lot, but frontside bus overclocking is not the way to go. It's probably the only way to do it on these Dell BTX machines. And let alone, the Core 2 architecture is not a good overclocker. Let's put it there. And even that it is not a good overclocker, and making the facts worse that I'm using frontside bus overclocking, yeah, not a good mix. And you got to keep in mind, this is a Dell machine too, with a, uh, a ripped off ATEX board. BTX style, which it means even more it's unstable. So, that's why pretty much Dell does not give you the option of the BIOS to overclock. They pretty much perceive the fact that it would be a terrible idea. And quite frankly, I don't blame them. It is a terrible ass idea. It should never be done. But I honestly, I took my Xeon out of this machine because I wanted my, um, my machine downstairs to be more power efficient as well as have that extra 3 gigahertz. So, I am technically willing to use an overclocked Core 2 quad. It's not stable. I might have some crashing issues from time to time, but fuck it. I might just buy a new Xeon if that if the case becomes worse. But anyhow, I'm gonna get on this and see if I can get this up and running again. All right, I'm trying this again, and this time I gotta select the controller. Uh, it should be over here. CV CV 184. I think it is. Get from plus. Okay, we're gonna gently ramp her up. Right, two point four exactly. Um, we can go up a little bit higher. We're at three point five or two point five. My bad. Two point six. Kind of pushing my edge here. 2.7. Oh god. 2.8. Um. Do I dare? Do I honestly dare to at least try 3 gigahertz? That could be a massive issue. I just want to see if the system actually is showing. It's probably not showing 3 gigahertz. What the frick? That's kind of weird. Oh, the, the CPU information is not... Sh okay, since this is frontside bus overclocking, this isn't accurate. How you can tell that it's working is if you have CPU-Z... Which, I don't think I have CPU-Z. Do I have CPU-Z? I should. Um... Everything's still loading up on my machine, so just keep in mind it is acting sluggish. Oh, I... I, I don't know what that is. You need to die. That's OBS. Um, where's CPU-Z? There it is. I extracted it, so where did I extract it to? You know what? Fuck it, I'll extract it again. I'm not in the mood. Here we go. CPU-Z 64-bit. Alright. This should give us what the information of the CPU is. This should actually give us an exact of what it's running at. See, it says 2.40 gigahertz, but if you go down to uh, bus speed, bus speed is overclocked. And machines, yeah, see, core speed. See, it says 2.40 gigahertz, being that this is not actually overclocking on the motherboard, this is overclocking on the front side bus and not particularly on the processor, it may say 2.40 gigahertz, but that's not actually the clock speed. If you go to core speed, that's our clock speed. It's running a little bit down, actually. Huh, that's kind of weird. It was just at 2.8. I don't know if you saw it, but it was at 2.8. Maybe it's speed stepping. I don't know. It could possibly be speed stepping. Um, let me actually pull up this down here. But it was running at, yeah, see right there? See, it's up. You saw it, it's speed stepping, but it was at 2.8. So the machine is clocking itself up. It may not look like this system is overclocked, but it actually is. And I am daring. I am very daring here. I don't think this is a good idea, but fuck it, I'm doing it. All right, little by little, we're going to get to 3 gigahertz. Fuck! Yep, yeah, nope, 2.9. That's what does it. Ugh. I gotta dial it back now. That's gonna take forever. Well, I know the limitations now. Uh, it's stupid to go past. It's stupid to go past 
2.9 is probably the most I'm going to get away with with minimum stability without with decent stability without it just completely destroying itself. So um this is yeah, this is literally the last time I front side bust overclocked a machine it was literally the same exact process. Don't think you're getting a special treatment here. It's all the same bullshit, really. We'll try and see if the system decides to boot directly into Windows. If it tries to freak out, if it freaks out and tries to boot and crashes instantly, that might mean that we're gonna have to go into safe mode, uh, reset the uh, reset the clock thing. What the freak? It just restarted itself randomly. Yeah, but this is literally what front side bus overclocking is like. It's a nightmare. It's literally just a nightmare. I've never liked this method of overclocking, but it's the only method I have on this machine that actually is capable of working. What the hell? I hit system normal. Why is it loading up like that? Okay! I've never seen it do that before. Let's try that again, and if it does that again, then that's clearly a front side bush issue. And I'll have to go ahead and uh, go into safe mode. Now it's time to display anything. This is acting weird. Technically, that poor front side bus might be getting a little tad too hot. So maybe I might just do 2.8 at max. Honestly, I think the Core 2 Quad Q6600 is nowhere near powerful enough to really reach the 3 gigahertz mark. And I'd be honestly, I'd be really pushing it at 2.9. I think 2.8 is my best bet here, which kind of sucks because I was really hoping to my goal of 3 gigahertz. And I should, I, you know, I, I kind of saw this coming, honestly. I knew that this wouldn't have clocked well, and I was hoping that I might, in my fantasy world, that I might be able to get the system at 3 gigahertz, but it's very clear that that's not going to happen here. It's very clear that it's not going to happen, so uh, we're just going to have to just, we're going to actually have to um go into 3 gigahertz, or just 2.8. That's my best bet here. Oh, why did I go into... I never wanted this. This machine's acting frantic now. You saw that. I never hit the F key. Start Windows Normal. Okay, here we go. I don't know. Maybe the front side bus was really hot because the little cooler that's on that front side bus is actually pretty pathetic. It might actually um, be overheating, and that might have been why it crashed. It's a possibility. Honestly, I'm not sure, though. And if it crashes upon startup here, then that's... That's, I don't want to have to boot in safe mode. Oh, my controller's vibrating. Okay, looks like it booted up. I don't know if it's stuck with that clock speed, though. It probably didn't. I don't know why it's stuck with the other one if it, if it crashed, but... Yeah, it's just... I don't know. Alright, let, let, me, let me log in here. Alright, the system is back up and everything, so... I'm loading up CPU ID so I can view what's going on with the system and overall the clock speeds. Now, this is, you might be wondering, oh, it said 2.40 gigahertz. What do you mean it's not, what do you mean it's overclocked to 2.8? Yes, it may have not have looked like that, but see, that little at 2.40 gigahertz right next to the sign logo there, that's a bunch of bull. That's not actually the clock speed. That's telling you the base clock. The core speed is what tells you your actual clock. See? Clocks, core zero, but that's that's what actually initializes and tells you your main clock speed. So, if you ever judge me saying, oh, it's still at 2.40 gigahertz, eh, it's not, okay? I don't need none of that bullshit. I've done that, I've overclocked front side buses a lot more than you, I'm pretty sure, and if you have overclocked more than me, then go ahead. I, I've done this maybe five or six times to some machines that could have used an extra performance boost. I believe it's this inside bus. All right, we're going. So right now we're at two point six. Go a little higher. I'm not two point seven. Let's just top it off at two point eight, shall we? All right. Not going any higher. It'd be suicide to go any higher. But we're overclocked. So, yeah. I'm not going any higher than 2.8. It's very clear that this chip is not capable of going any higher. And let alone this motherboard can't really go any higher without freaking out. 
let alone frontside bus overclocking is not helping either. I know I said this multiple times, but I'm being honest with you. This frontside bus overclocking is literally a last resort option. You are never to overclock frontside bus. If your motherboard has a overclock feature on the motherboard BIOS, use that feature. Frontside bus overclocking is trash. It always has been. But in this case, since this machine does not allow me, because the setting is locked, it's not even on the board, you could probably flash the BIOS and get it to do it, but I don't know. These Dell machines don't really give you that option. The core voltage is higher. The core voltage originally, if you might have noticed, was at 1.038 or something like that. Now it's at 1.238. So the core voltage is higher. That is proof that we're overclocked. And as you can see, core speed may not look like it's doing much. That's mainly because... Actually, I want to do something here. I want to go back to the original clock speed. Because I can actually bench this. I just want to see exactly how much of a performance boost we're getting out of this. Probably not much, but this is more or less just an experiment seeing if my main rig can technically do that. Alright, get frontside bus. We're going to bring this way back. Well, not that far back. I don't want to underclock the damn thing. Oh, I just underclocked it to 2.1. God damn it. 2 point, I'm at 2.2 .2 gigahertz. I need to get to 2.4. There we go. 2.4.6. Okay, that's good. Alright, let me zoom out here. This is a really... I should honestly screen cap this. I am sorry I'm doing it this way. It's just that with the machine becoming unstable, it's probably not a good idea to do this. Alright, we're benching. We're getting about a 791 score benching right now. So... We're going to overclock and we're going to see what we're getting. 791, I can probably remember that. So we're going to overclock and we're going to see what we're going to get. So I'm going to crank this. Whoa, not that high. That would be suicide. 2.7, I'm almost there. Uh, almost there. Yeah, just crank it up, maybe just a tab higher. Alright, that's good. Alright, we were at 7... What was it? 791. So... Oh, wait, not that. So we're going to bench it again and see what we get. Okay. Evidently, it's lower this time. I clearly don't know how the fuck that's possible. Oh, I didn't fully bench it. That's why. It wasn't done benching. Okay, one thing I did notice about this, I, I just realized, the re I just remembered, since we're front side bus overclocking here, our single thread score is going to go down. That is what's going to happen. Evidently, that's really weird, because normally if you overclock multi-core processors, your single core thread c uh, level is going to go higher. In this case, with front side bus overclocking, that's not the thing. This is an entirely different method of overclocking, so... If you think that's how this works, it's not how it works. But our CPU multi-thread score did go up. So, believe it or not, uh, oh my god. Anyhow, um, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. This is done. I am not overclocking her any higher. This is done. And it, this is a, this was a disaster as is. I'm not doing this ever again, probably. But we are overclocked, so I'm going to see how my games run. Thanks for watching, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Alright guys, it's been a full day, and I've been using the system perfectly fine with the overclock I made. Uh, if we go into programs here, and we go to CPU-Z, I'll load it up here. Let me just show you what I've done here. So, the original front side bus in this machine was clocked at 800, maybe 900, no, 800 megahertz. Uh, if you look down to the rated front side bus speed, yeah, we're at 1.2 gigahertz. Or, 1, 1... Or in this case, as you might know, 1200 megahertz, which is a whopping improvement from the original clock speed, from the front side bus speed. So, this is definitely the highest I'm going to get out of this system. This is a Kensfield system, but like I said, it doesn't it may not look like it's clocked up there, because you can see the core voltage is higher, 
and it still says 2.40 gigahertz but if you look down at the core speed obviously it's clocking itself down because it's not being utilized that much I've noticed that these chips do speed step themselves even though they may not say they do they do indeed do it let's go ahead and launch minecraft here well I gotta zoom out sorry this camera angle is really shaky not the best quality video I do apologize for that we'll go ahead and we'll open up Minecraft here. Take CPU Z, you might notice it's right there. All went down. So let's go ahead and accept the CPU Z, and you might notice it's at 2.8 gigahertz. So this system is indeed overclocked. And from what I've noticed over the overclocking period, it can actually become a tab unstable where the system can be a little bit weird. It only had it happen once, but it immediately pulled out of it. But the system has had a 20% in increase in uh, performance. So that's also because the front side bus is being clocked up, which means it can thread information faster from the RAM to the CPU to the graphics units. And being that my card is overclockable as well, using MSI Afterburner as well, let me open it up here, uh, it will allow me to properly run the system at a much higher clock rate, which is good. This is good. This means that the system runs a little bit smoother, and I don't know why, but MSI Afterburner is not showing me any information over my video cards. It's not even showing my video cards in general, so whatever. That's weird. But it is working really good. This is an improvement. Now, I'm going to say this one last time. I've probably already said it three times already, but front side bus overclocking is extremely, extremely, extremely dangerous. You can cause some pretty bad potential harm to your computer if you don't know what you're doing. As you saw, I did screw up the system a lot of times, and I almost got her stuck in a boot loop. I had to reset the BIOS the first time, and then it worked, and then I had to go ahead and re put the system in safe mode and do a bunch of crap to reset it. So, um, so whatever the case is, this is a last minute, this is a last thing resort to overclocking. The funny thing is, being that this is a Core 2 Quad, it it's since the Core 2 Quad series is not meant to be overclocked, the Core 2 Extreme is overclockable, but this processor, on the other hand, is not supposed to be overclocked. It still says it's at 2.4 GHz, but as you can tell, it's not. That is not the case here. The core speed is at 2.857 GHz, or 2.8 GHz, so it is definitely higher clocked than it looks. Um, the system is running, and look at the bus speed. That is a huge improvement on the bus speed. Uh, the original bus speed was, or front side bus, not the bus speed, but the front side bus was only at 800 megahertz, 800 or 900 megahertz last time I saw. Now it's at a whopping 1.2 gigahertz, which is not that great for the North Bridge because the North Bridge on the system runs a lot hot, really hot. So one of the modifications that I'm going to be doing to this computer is I'm going to be installing a cooling fan as long as the heat sink to the front side bus to basically ensure that the system cools itself off properly because the front side bus or the uh, the north bridge heat sink on this thing is pretty tiny and it gets very 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 hot so that's gonna be something I'm gonna have to do but that's the end of this video I know it's been a long one so if you guys have enjoyed this uh, please send me a comment I don't recommend that any of you do this if you do decide to front side bus overclock I have done it plenty of times with these older systems. It is possible to do. It's not an ideal thing to do, but it does help with performance. So if you really want to do this, I guess you could ask me. I know how to do it just fine. Uh, but there's a couple steps you need to do it with. Thanks for watching, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.